Welcome to Thursday's edition of Renew. I'm Pastor Tony. Thanks for joining us and let's get right into it today. Let's go back over to the book of Colossians again. Colossians chapter 1. We are talking about the reality of the forgiveness of our sins. Now again, that's already a reality in the mind and the heart of God. But on our end, it needs to become a reality in our hearts and minds as well. The fact that God has completely forgiven us and forgotten and wiped our slate clean like it never existed before all of our sins. Now yesterday hearing the book of Colossians chapter 1 uh, verses 15 and 16 we found out that the Creator Jesus became the creation. The Son of God became the Son of Man. The Son of God was incarnate in a physical body through the virgin birth and came and paid the price for all of mankind's sins and purchased the creation back. Why is that? Again, because the Creator, His worth and value exceeds the value and the worth of all of the creation. See, a debt that it would have required all of mankind to pay for an eternity incarcerated in hell, Jesus, the Creator, the Son of God, so valuable, so worthy, could pay it in three days and three nights, and He did. That is good news right there. But I want to back up just a little bit in our verses here to verse number 12. Colossians chapter 1, beginning with verse number 12. It says, Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Now I want you to notice that that is past tense. It says the Father has qualified us. And we're not looking ahead to be a partaker of that inheritance. No, that inheritance has already been put in our account. See, again, this talks about the value of Jesus, the value of that sacrificial lamb, the substitute of Jesus who went to the cross to pay the price for our sin. The fact that not only did he pay the sin debt, but he also qualified us to be a partaker of that inheritance. Man, that's awesome right there. Now notice that we couldn't qualify ourselves. See, it's deception to think that we, through a few good works, could pay the sin debt off and to earn this inheritance. Can't be done, could never be done. No, this is a free gift that God provided because He knew we couldn't do it. So He provided it free of charge to us, even though it cost Him His only Son and cost Jesus His life. Jesus paid the price because He was so valuable and so worthy that He qualified us to be a partaker of that great inheritance of God. Now verse 13 it goes on to say he has delivered us from the power of darkness and he has transferred or conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love again that's past tense isn't it it says he has delivered us when did that happen when Jesus went to the cross when he paid the price for our sin see that delivered us right there from the powers of darkness the powers of darkness that kept us under their heel, kept us under their thumb all that time, and was continually bringing us under condemnation and accusation, Jesus pulled the rug out from under them. He paid the price for our sin. He disarmed principalities and powers. Not only that, but He delivered us out of that kingdom, and He translated and transferred us over into the kingdom of the Son of God's love. Again, that's the gospel message, isn't it? That's the heart of the gospel right there. Now again, all these are in context of verse 14, which we read yesterday. Verse 14 reads, In whom, that's talking about Jesus again, in whom we have redemption, uh, uh, buying back, paying the purchase price, uh, he, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Now notice it says there that our redemption came through his blood. Now again, when we're talking about the blood of Jesus, we're not just talking about some kind of religious symbology here. We're our ritual. We are talking about a powerful reality of the fact that Jesus shed his blood for us. Now why, why is that so important? Why do we see that over and over again in the New Covenant, in the New Testament? The fact that the, it, it, it keeps bringing out, emphasizes the blood that Jesus shed for us. Well, Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 says that the life of all flesh is in the blood. The life of all flesh is in the blood. So in other words, the blood 
is is the representative of the life so when we see Jesus shedding his blood for us on the cross pouring his blood out for us that is representative of the fact that he's pouring his life out for us he's giving his life for us and see because again the value of that life of Jesus is so great that blood of Jesus so pure so incorruptible that it when it hit sin it wiped it out it purified it it cleansed it like it never existed before man that's better than any cleansing agent that you could possibly think of you know Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 I believe it is says that even though our sins were scarlet we shall our, they shall be whiter than snow well how did that happen was it through our good works or through something else no it was through the blood of Jesus representing the life the valuable incorruptible life of Jesus and you know this is why Peter said it this way over in uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18 and 19 it says knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold from your aimless conduct received by the traditions from your father but verse 19 says but with the precious blood of Jesus with the pre precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot that's what makes his blood so so incorruptible so valuable was the fact that Jesus life was without blemish and without spot we weren't purchased with a chip off the streets of gold we were purchased with the very blood of the Creator himself embodied and incarnate in a man that shed his blood for the forgiveness for the redemption of all of our sins boy I tell you that's powerful well that's all the time I've got for today join us again tomorrow for more of this good news if you like additional resources and materials go to TonyCowan.org we'll see you tomorrow